are you trying to get your friends and family around the table to play a game? I might have the right one for you today. It's called Party Wanted, and it has some irreverent humor, uh, uh, mini games, killing creatures, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And on top of that, you can have some adult beverages too. So stick around. Can't wait for you to meet Eric. That interview starts now. Hey, Eric, how are you? I'm excellent. How are you doing today, Mike? Very good. But we had a little pre interview, and there was so much good stuff coming out, I had to start it now. No worries. But so you have a game that's already out called Party Wanted. Yes, sir. Um, and when I saw this, I immediately bought it um, because it's right in my, it's my funny bone in all the right ways. And on top of that, you have three expansions right now? Yeah, we got three right now, and our fourth is actively on Kickstarter. We funded it in the day, and we're just hoping to hit a bunch of the stretch goals and get a bunch more cool shit for all our backers. Dude, that, that'd be awesome, yeah. Some of your expansions are called Drunker by the Minotaur. Yeah, so our we're very punny, tongue-in-cheek. I, I think I'm funny. Yeah, our three expansions that we currently have, it's actually the Minotaur ones from an old joke, like a sketch I always wanted to do, where it's like this parking lot is being minotaured, and people think it's monitored. And someone's like breaking oh. into a car, and then you just get like ripped in half by this giant minotaur. They're like, what? Man? <laughs> but yeah, so our, our Zerker expansion is Drunker by the Minotaur. It's kind of like Greek themed, which as one does, our Druid is our Jennifer Love Druid expansion. Uh, our Bard, which is our most non-family friendly, is our Dungeon Dating Simp, but the S is really tiny because he's a tiefling. And then right now, our Necro, which we're releasing, is Post Necrone, which is a little uh, shout-out to Post Malone, who is an absolute fucking champ. Love the guy. Oh, yeah, I should... So I, I tend to curse quite a bit. I, I'll try to, you know... I'm already going to label this as... I'm smart. already having a maturity label. Just yeah, it's... it's we're going to talk about. On our On our game, you literally do a 21 and up. Like, I try to be... You know what I mean? I had one guy, he's like, man, if you could make this family friendly, I would buy it. I'm like, dude, no shot. Like, see... <laughs> Yeah, so now the base game, it's a mix between Munchkin, and there's a game called Barcadia, and there is several other games that I feel are all wrapped into this, some sensibilities there. I love it, I love everything about it, but why don't you explain to the people who don't know anything what the game's all about? The elevator pitch we use is essentially if Slay the Spire, Munchkin, and Mario Party had a drunken three-way, that is a co-op, roguelike cooperative dungeon crawler with social party games and optional drinking like a D&D &D that plays itself I'm like a I'm like a 10 year forever DM so yeah yeah, yeah the struggle right so it's that was a large part going into this too don't get me wrong I love DMing I love everything about it but it is not the same as playing with your friends no you know what I mean and so the way this is set up it's like you, you set up what we call the pyramid of chaos you have two rows of land you'll choose one from the bottom one from the top and then you'll fight a boss and you do that four different times scaling up you add cards to your deck you get treasures you get weapons you guys play with your hands face up so you're full co-op so it's really all about if you think about the preemptive planning that you have when you know you're going to go into combat and like D&D that is a group in my game it's okay this, he's faster than our wizard, so if we don't slow him down, he's going to hit everybody, but our, our rogue can slow him down, and that'll slow him down for the whole group, and our fighter can block for this, and our minotaur can attack and help for this. So it's really, you can play it solo, and but I tell people all the time, I'm always upfront about everything. It's I, The only way I'm playing this solo is if I'm, like, camping or I'm somewhere without, because I genuinely, something like Slay the Spire or something like that is just so much more in-depth and quicker. Can't compete with the computer that runs those kind of things. Like, sure. And where this truly shines is the group environments, the socials, and the bringing your friends who they like maybe the joke parts, they like the drinking and the socials, but they're not used to a deck builder, or they're not used to D&D, &D, or they're not used to roguelikes, or any implies manage to smuggle it in, kind of Trojan horse it, if you will. You'd be like, oh yeah, you like drinking games, right? Yeah, don't, don't worry about the don't worry about the attacking and the defending and the math and the deck building. But not, just chill. <laughs> So, yeah. so, there is, so, so the moral of the story is there's something for everybody. Genuinely. Uh, yeah, I briefly touched on this earlier, but my sister is always my go-to example. She really only likes social deduction board games. I've tried for years. I have tried her. Literally, it does not matter what it is. She just checks out. And this is something that's perfect for someone like her because it's like... I had a guy who, he's a DM for, or GM for Call of Cthulhu, I had, who had hired him to do a one-shot for his birthday. And I gave him a copy just to thanks because I know how it is. And months later, he hit me back. He's like, hey, man, I finally got to play it. He's like, thank you so much. He's like, my wife hates d d Like, she won't play. She doesn't do anything. She's like, she had a blast doing the socials and doing the drinking. And I was like, yes. Sure, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, I want everyone to have a good time. I don't want it to just be, oh, 
this is my type of thing. I'm going to like, this isn't my type of thing. I wanted to do a little bit of something for everyone where it's, yeah, you're going to find something in this game. If you like gaming, period, you're going to find something in here that you enjoy. The the base setup for the lands is you have your social, your action, and your drinking. Party, as we were talking, anything from... My, one of my personal favorites is uh, Eyes of the Beholder, and you have to have a staring contest with another hero. We have the archery range where you physically pick an object. I'll be like, you know, that drink, and I'll throw my that card at the object, and everyone else has to throw their card, and the closest one gets a treasure. There's, like, impressions, there's jokes, there's, you know, voice work, goofy, balanced, they just fun little stuff. that It helps foster that. Uh, if anyone's really done a campaign or played through a long tabletop thing, you get, like, this group meshing that happens. As you Absolutely. play through that, you know? And yeah. I don't feel a lot of that normally in uh, most board games, unless it's, like, Legacy. I very much feel that in Legacy-type games. But the socials are, like, a cheat way to make people, oh, wow, this, I, I'm invested now. You get to rare play a little bit. You get to jump into the character. It's just, yeah, it makes it so much fun. As we were doing our early stages of playtesting, the game used to be a lot more <laughs> map-heavy, a lot more, like, battle focused and over and over playtesters like the people that love the deck building love that but the people that were on the fence they were like these socials man they're like that's all the gimmick gimme you know what i mean sure yeah (laughs) yeah i love that i love that aspect of games i just interviewed somebody who has a a game that is what they would consider an an intro into gaming for people yeah uh so those people who are your traditional monopoly clue players things like that have never really played a game outside of that Milton Bradley genre, it's a great way to introduce people to other types of game. So that was when I first started, like, when we were pitching this, I, without knowing, I guess, the scale of what I, I for me, this is like a very, like a 1.5 or a 2. It's, it's not that, and so we would even say, yeah, semi-casual, but it's only semi-casual if you have at least one person who's as nerdy as I am. Like, I mean, you need, I've had a, a group where there'll be like four people and they're like, oh man, this is like a lot of rules. And then we'll have like eight people and they're like, wait, is this it? That we just That's all we got to do and then we play? <laughs> Those are things that you want, right? Because I, I, yes. I love being able to have a, a bunch of folks over and be like, hey, I have this game we should try. And here's a very key was like that for us because my neighbor's behind us. It was a great way for me to introduce that game to them and for them to have a good time. And we had such a good time that we left the game out in the rain and the box got ruined. Thank God the other pieces are waterproof. Uh Then it's got a story. Then it's got character. Absolutely. Absolutely. I even emailed the manufacturer of the game and said, hey, uh, I know you guys do replacement pieces. Can I get a replacement box? They are like, yeah, that's not covered. And I would have been like, if you could just send me a photo of you guys with the box and the story alone is worth it. Like, I would have been like, oh, yeah, I'll send you a box. Come on. It's got any gold. So now that brings up a really good point. How waterproof is your game? Uh, Well, so we are as close as you can be to waterproof without being waterproof. We did. That was one of the big things for our first Kickstarter was like our first stretch goals were to do double cord and then to have a 330 GSM that's dual oil coated. So it's like literally as close as it gets to being actually waterproof without waterproofing. But beyond just that, on our Discord for everyone that backed our original projects, we have a PDF that has all of the cards. So if you ever damage or destroy a card, you can just reprint them like for free. Not only that, but if you were the type of person who like you maybe you bought the base game, but you were on the fence about the expansions. (laughs) <laughs> knock yourself out man if you don't want to spend 10 bucks for the expansion you can print and play it yourself i as someone who does tons of or used to do a lot of magic kitchen table magic proxy nights oh, yeah. i know how much work it is to make something look good so i will just spend the ten dollars personally but i don't yeah. want to like well we also had a bunch of people and this attests to a larger problem but we had people in iceland originally who really wanted the game and on Kickstarter, it was 25 bucks to buy the game. It was $60 to ship it to them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So it's like, what do we do? We make a print-and-play version. Here's $4 if you really want to do it. <laughs> a giant hassle. The, the, the true upside of that is we try to make a card for every major convention that we go to, hand them out at the conventions, and all those cards are on the PDF as well. So oh, even if you cool. yeah, yeah, even if you never went to any of the conventions, you can print out the cards and because they all play in the game like regular cards. I, I think one of my favorites is the Golden Booty. Which the artwork for that, which I'll be showing you right now, is epic. Yeah, so that's my roommate Dallas was our original artist. He did almost 
all of the base art for the game. Uh, we ended up getting into a time crush and we really had to branch out. And then we got a bunch of other amazing artists, which ended up working really well. I remember early on in our playtesting days, we had a guy and he's like, I got a critique. He's like, normally I would hate seeing multiple art styles in a game. He's like, but your game is already so like fun and chaotic that it meshes really well. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I was like, thanks, man. That, that, that's a genuinely nice compliment that we got. And then what we try to do is our expansions are pretty much done by one person. You know what I mean? But yeah, we want lots of people. We're trying to get tons of different artists from all over the world. Sure. Get, get everybody some work. Oh, the great thing is we just reviewed Stonemaier Games is a game called Wingspan, which is a Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Their fan art pack, which I found fascinating because not only is that traditional pen and paper and coloring, but there's also crocheted versions of the cards and things like that. So it is so beautiful. I think that would be a great way to open it up to people is do a, a fan art pack where people can go ahead and create your own games. And so we've done, we've tried to implement a lot of that, especially through the Kickstarter and through our community. So last time with our next, as soon as we get our last card stock for the current Kickstarter, our next upgrade goal is another voting. So what we do is like through our discord, an idea. And then we put those two ideas against each other. We'll vote those. We'll vote them down until we have like our four winners. And then you guys get to say, okay, what type of card is this? What's our, what's the joke? What's the thing? What are we doing here? And then we yeah. send that to our artists. And then also for stretch goals, we did that on both of ours. So there's uh, and the Necro one, there's a $666 one where you just give us reference art. You get to name one of the minions and then we'll use your art in the game. Like as the your permanent, not a Kickstarter version. Sure. Yeah. 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 We, we love that stuff. Like, honestly, the community driven stuff is some of my favorite. The polls that we did, we have the, the current version that we have now, our Kickstarter version. There's seven cards in there from our original Kickstarter that were all community voted and community approved and stuff like that. And it's like, I, every time I see them, I'm like, you. Someone put a mimic in our treasure pile. Like, our treasure pile was pure and it was good <laughs> and there was nothing bad. And then they just voted. They're like, yeah, you don't need a mimic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That makes everything great. Eric, uh, you I ended your up. game's awesome. I ordered it just because it, it, it's my funny bone. You have a Kickstarter running right now. I'll have links on the We do. Thank well. you so much. As to your website, so people can go and pick this up. The base game's only 30 bucks. Each expansion is only 10 You can get the whole set plus the pre-mats everything for what's 50 60 70 so, Yeah, yeah, right, right now, if you go to the Kickstarter, not only will you get all that stuff, but for 66 bucks, it's the base game, all the expansions, including the upcoming Necro, all the stretch goals from that current Kickstarter, and what will be the new playmat for that as well. But like I said, no, I should no, no, I, bought my I'm game. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, be, I didn't even, I didn't notice it till after, but I'm gonna hook you up. Like I said, as soon as we get our Kickstarter stuff, I will be sending you all the stuff from my neck. I would very much appreciate it. Oh, then no, I feel like I just got kicked in the teeth. I'm no, 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 you're gonna, you're gonna get the, you're gonna get the hookup for sure. That's, I, like I said, I realized afterwards, I saw the last name and I was like, wait. And the pink, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right. I couldn't wait. It looked so good. I was like, I want that, to get it. So that's the other thing too, is like it, what a lot of the people that did, because we had a ton of return backers. That's why the Kickstarter did so well so quickly. And they just needed the Necro. They already had everything else. So we had a $6 tier for just the Necro. And now the Necro is only 10 bucks. We had some people that are like, they'll buy everything else off the website and then do the Necro because that might not be here till October and people don't want to wait be right. yeah. three months, four months, five months to play the game. Yeah. So yeah, well, yeah, trust me, I'll make sure. I'll make sure. I got it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I, that, that goes back to what I was talking about genuinely with you really, especially starting out, you have to take care of your customer. This game wouldn't exist without our backers. This wouldn't exist without the people that go to our convention, the conventions and play test and give us these. We have so much um, information and feedback that we have taken from our, even still now, like we had a, a Gamma, the guy had a great suggestion. He was like, hey, Oh, you lost your camera there. Yeah, I lost my camera. What happened? <laughs> oh, I'm going to replace my face with artwork from the game. And now there we go. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep, I'm just, uh, my, my point to all this is we constantly, you know what I mean? On our Discord, there is an updated rules FAQ. There's tutorial stuff. If you have questions, please reach out to us. Like, every time we do this, we're refining, we're redoing. This Necro is going to come with some starter monsters that you'll be able to use for the original base game as well just to make it even easier because we had some people that were struggling a little bit and we didn't want to make sure that if you want to play the game where you're not going to die, we are going to provide you with the ability to do that. You ended up. And if you want to play harder, oh my God, there's a million. It only gets harder. 
<laughs> awesome. I, I, it was a real pleasure to get a chance to talk to you. Yeah, it was so nice. Thank you so much for this. All the, all this creative stuff you're going to be doing, and hopefully it'll be at the con here soon. Yeah, like I said, if, if it's your next year for sure, I'll see you at Gen Con. Oh, absolutely. Thank you.